Okay, let's begin. Uh, in today's tutorial session, we are supposed to look at a relatively less number of problems than usual. So, uh, first we'll look at adequacy of connectives. Yeah, the first problem is that singleton negation is not adequate. Why is that so? Loudly. It is unary operator that doesn't mean it cannot show connections between two things. We cannot show disjunctions, how will you prove that? Huh? By induction, how will you use induction? Tell me. I mean, what is evaluation anyway? First, look at what are the formulas. If negation is your only symbol, then what are the formulas that you can construct from a two variable alphabet? We can construct P, we can construct negation P, then double negation P, triple negation P, quadruple negation P and so on and so forth. Okay. Then similar with Q. Okay, so by induction you can argue that these are all the formulas. And what will be their truth tables if there are only two variables? What is the property of those truth tables that you can extract from this? Exactly half of the values are true, half of the values are false. Well, you make this claim by induction, uh, sorry, make this claim and prove by induction that this claim is true. Induction is very easy. What is the induction, uh, what is the base case? For variables, yeah, our, so I am going to write down the steps, you fill in the details. So, uh, construct all formulas for L equal to PQ with only negation as the connective. Then claim that any truth table, uh, any column of the truth table for a formula contains exactly half is and half falses okay so this is your claim and how will you prove this claim using induction what is the base case for induction p and q only the variables and how many entries are there in a truth in a column Four. Yes, because there are two variables, so 2 to the power 2, four, 4 things. So, base case is P and Q. Yeah, I mean, try that and inductive case is, what is the inductive case here? How do you generate a more complex formula from an existing one? Just negation. Yeah? So, inductive case is if S has the property, I mean the property is the, uh, the one mentioned here in the claim, then so does negation S and that is all. You are not supposed to do anything else. As soon as you prove the claim, then you are done. Why? Any any uh, connective, any binary connectives which has three trues 
or three falses cannot be expressed in this language. So we are done. What cardinality? Okay, see, um, we, uh, we don't want to go there because we haven't defined valuations properly. Unless you define valuation, you cannot define We are using the column for truth table because the truth function is given. Negation's truth function is given. If you remember, we are not trying to do semantics here, we are trying to do more syntax. Yeah, here syntax corresponds to only this. So, our normal logical, uh, logical equivalence relies on valuations. And the valuation has a very specific meaning. Uh, and what did we prove? Valuation was a function from SL to truth false, which satisfies certain conditions. And that function is nothing but a function from L to true to valued functions. Now that form that particular proposition also we haven't shown for only this line, this uh, set of. Uh, connectives. We have done lot of things and after that we define the concept of logical equivalence and after that we define the concept of Lindenbaum Tarski algebra. So we don't want to go as far. Just by counting this won't work. You actually have to go into the nitty gritties of how formulas are constructed. And then the truth table, whatever truth table we are talking about that only depends on the truth table for this. Okay, so we only know one connective and we can only use that connective. So we cannot use our usual concept of logical equivalence unfortunately. Here we are not talking about valuations like truth tables have to do with truth functions and truth functions are more syntactic objects. What, what is a truth function? It is any function from true false to the power n to true false. Now, valuation is what we understand, right? That is a syntactic, uh, semantic concept. But there is no such concept required here. The definition of adequacy of a set of connectives simply states that every truth function, the column for every truth function, we should be able to generate using given set of connectives. So it is a purely syntactic concept. You understand? So therefore we don't need that, we just need this. Yeah, so don't try to use cardinality arguments here. See, I am not saying that you cannot do it, but you will have to prove lots of results before you can first approach that. Any questions? Sir, yes? Can't we show the uh, all the equivalence classes generated by this, like P, Q, negation P and negation Q? Uh -huh. Only uh, four classes are, uh, can be generated with negation and then we can say that other uh, for uh, Example, P disjunction Q cannot be generated from. But it not. won't even be a Boolean algebra. When we are talking about Lindenbaum Tarski algebra, it won't even be a Boolean algebra. What is contradiction and what is tautology? Tell me. In the normal LT algebra, what is the contradiction? What is the formula whose class is contradiction? P conjunction negation P. You don't have conjunction. How will you obtain the zero of the Boolean algebra? We don't have disjunction, P disjunction, negation P. We don't have disjunction, so how will you obtain the top element? The algebra there will have a totally different structure. It will be just P, negation P, Q, negation Q and they are all, all on their own. None of them is contained inside any other. It will be an anti-chain of four elements. Well, that's really boring. Yeah, and also not the correct way 
to prove things. The proof, the only method that we know of is induction. So if you want to show something is not adequate, then your only method is induction. Yeah, you find out a property. Okay, so uh, then you can complete the proof that any column with 3, any true function whose column consists of 3 trues or 3 falses cannot be written using this or even 4 for that matter. Yeah, 4 truths, all 4 truths, a tautology or a contradiction that also cannot be expressed using this. Hopefully you got the idea. What about the second problem that singleton implication is not adequate? Tautology cannot be constructed? No. P implies P is a tautology. Negation P cannot be constructed. How will you argue? Single variable, okay, good, good start. So, we start with only single variable case. Then, what are the formulas that you can construct? P implies P, then P implies P, implies P, or P implies P implies P, and so on and so forth. Then, whenever the truth value of P, I mean, you consider any column, any row which has uh, value of P listed as true. Then, what will be the value of, uh, I mean, the, the corresponding entry in the column? It will always be true. And how will you prove that? Using induction. So, it will always be true and as a consequence, yeah, what will happen? Negation can never be constructed. Okay, good. So, that's that's your argument, yeah? And here, I want you to pay attention, yeah? That's how mathematics works. Did we really use the full truth table for implication? No. What did we use? Just one row. Whenever P is true, then P implies P is always true. I am not writing a proof of this by the way, I, I hope you understand. Now I want you to go a bit further and try to, sorry, uh, undo and try to look at problem 4 now. If F0 is an adequate binary connective, it is a singleton adequate binary connective. Then we are trying to show that F0 of true true is false and F0 of false false is true. Va what is this argument? Tell me. So, if it is true, then it will always be true. Exactly. Exactly. Use, use the same argument that we used for implication. If F0 of true true is equal to true, then any formula constructed only using F0 will have the first row will be entirely always true. So, you can never express negation. Now, that is an observation because for implication also we did not really use the full strength of the truth table. And because there is some involution acting on truth tables. What is that involution? Involution means a map which is its own inverse or a map whose square is identity. So, the involution is the swapping map, truth and false. Okay. So, the same argument will work even for the second part that F0 of false false cannot continue to be false because then that row is going to create a problem. So, F0 of false false must be true, F0 of true true must be false. Okay. So, now let us do some logic. We want to prove 4 by contradiction, I mean contrapositive. 
वट इज द कॉन्ट्रा पॉजिटिव ऑफ दिस स्टेटमेंट टेल मी If f zero of or or yeah exactly that or is important. So under any of if one of these fails, then you have to show that f zero is not adequate, right? So don't say that both of them fail together because this is an and. So conjunction negation of con uh, conjunction is disjunction of negations so you do that i will write down a few steps so that uh, you will have some help so we prove contra positive okay so suppose f0 of true true is not equal to false well not equal to false because we are in a binary world not equal to false is being true suppose this is true or false false is not equal to true means it is false so we will show under either hypothesis the truth table i mean uh, the unary connective negation cannot be expressed using f0 uh via induction okay and then the argument is simple you just have to use induction to show this yeah because negation is always supposed to flip yeah i mean uh, here i am going to say use the language l equal to singleton p yeah don't complicate your lives make them make it as simple as possible just use uh, this and you are through with one variable how do you write a two variable uh, connective when you don't know i mean usually when you have conjunction disjunction implication you write them in between two things but this is f0 how will you write it f0 f0 of s comma t right so just use them as binary functions okay any questions okay now i think all of you are expert enough to tell me the solution for this yes how do you obtain negation using nor p nor p is negation okay i am taking your word i don't know, remember right now and what is uh, conjunction wasn't this it the same thing with nand oh what what you said will be disjunction p nor q nor p nor q that would be disjunction okay good so if all of you can prove see if you want to show something is adequate then you have to express negation and conjunction or negation and disjunction yeah you don't use induction <laughs> if you want to prove something is uh, adequate because what happens is that we already know one adequate set of connectives what is that negation and conjunction if you can express everything in one adequate set of connectives using your connectives then you are through by the way tell me what is a minimal set minimal adequate set of connectives no, no, no. i am not asking you for an example what is the definition 
of a minimal adequate set of connectors. Minimum connective, what is the minimum? Mini number minimum number of connectives, that's also not true. Any, any adequate set that generates all other adequate sets. That generates all other adequate sets, no. No. Whenever we talk about minimality, what what is the first thing that comes to your mind? No, no, smallest, but order. It has to do with order. Some kind of order, some kind of partial order. It's now, what a, partial order? It's not a subset of any other idea. Exactly. It is, no, no, no. No. It doesn't have a proper subset which is yeah. adequate. Yeah, it is minimal with respect to subset relation, with respect to inclusion. Okay. So, conjunction, disjunction, negation. That is adequate, but it is not minimally adequate ok good so now uh, now that we have established 4 that if f0 is adequate and it is binary then f0 of true true is false and f0 of false false is true now let us go to the next problem we need to show that NAND and NOR you have already shown these two are adequate yes so NAND and NOR are the only singleton adequate sets of connectors why? Because from previous we have shown if it's true, true or false, false uh -huh. it has to be the opposite. So we have only two choices left. Very good. We have only other two choices left. So let us write down all such choices. Okay, so this is let's say P and Q, and then I'm just going to say F1 of PQ, F2 of PQ, F3 of PQ and f4 of pq these are the only only possibilities we know that true true must give you false so these are all falses then these are all trues so the remaining i mean the four possibilities are based on what are the values here okay the first uh, so this could be true true then this could be false false then this could be true false or it could be false true. Now, what is F1? Non. I think F1 is NAND. F1 is NAND. F2 is NOR. F3 is? F3 is negation Q. And F4 is? Negation P. And we have already shown that negations are not good choices. Done. Right? So, this is not a hard problem to solve. So, these two are and these two are not. I mean, what is the argument here? C consider F3 and F4. Their columns consist of exactly half trues, half falses done yeah there is no other thing necessary any questions okay let's proceed so we want to show this result so this is the semantic deduction theorem okay how will you prove something like that contra positive very good by the way, is everybody here familiar with the difference between contrapositive and contradiction? If you want to show A implies B, then what is contrapositive? Okay, I mean I know all of you know that. Yeah, that much is. So, you only start with the uh, assumption that B fails and you conclude that A fails. A fails. Okay. Whereas, what is the proof by contradiction? We assume that? We assume A and assume that B fails. Exactly. We assume that A holds and B fails. 
yeah if these two contradictory things are assumed then we conclude a contradiction right so b fails is common to both of those assumptions but assume that a holds and b fails so tell me one proof that we have done using real contradiction Cantor's theorem. Yes, in Cantor's theorem, we assume that the bijection holds, and then later we also assume. What did do we assume? Do we assume what is the conclusion? Conclusion is that the free image of the constructed set does not exist. Right. So I think the. Uh, Cantor's theorem is a bit more complicated logically to think about. So when we prove uh, that Maxwell is equivalent to prime is equivalent. Exactly, exactly. That proof is a very good example. Yeah, we assumed that. I mean, one of those two uh, two conditions. Yeah, out of those three, maximal prime and ultra. Yeah, whenever we want to prove, let's say the exam question. Yeah, well, what was that? ultra implies prime so we assume that prime fails and ultra holds and then we obtain a contradiction okay so that's a proof by contradiction and whenever we use proof by contradiction we are actually using a law of logic it is a meta law of logic yeah and that law is called law of the excluded middle law of excluded middle now excluded middle means the world is binary okay it simply says that p uh, i mean any statement let's say phi so phi or negation phi is a tautology okay law of excluded middle says that phi or negation phi is tautology so basically one of these two must always hold phi or negation phi one of these two must hold so whenever we show that negation phi doesn't hold then by the law of excluded middle we conclude that phi must hold now some mathematic mathematic uh, mathematicians there is a community of them they are called as constructivists or intuitionists yeah and in particular intuitionists they do not like this law because it doesn't provide you with any constructive justification of why phi should be true what we usually end up proving is that negation phi doesn't hold but it's not really a valid reason for concluding that phi must hold yeah so intuitionists or constructivists they both always reject this law and then they have a separate logic separate meta level logic whatever we are doing is called classical propositional logic but intuitionists they use intuitionistic logic where they basically reject this law okay phi or negation phi is tautology or is truth they reject reject this law and whenever you reject this law then most of the things that you can do especially in constructivism they can always be taught to a computer computer also doesn't really understand phi or negation phi equal to true yeah because that's not a valid thing it doesn't provide an example it doesn't provide justification for why phi must be true in constructive logic you cannot use proof by contradiction you understand so i also want to bring your uh, bring to your attention the fourth law that we wrote yesterday the fourth law logical axiom what was that 
law of contraposition contraposition right so that also will not hold there okay so phi or negation phi for intuitionistic logic it goes very close to truth but it doesn't exactly go there okay so there is a branch of logic called intuitionistic logic especially there is a branch of philosophy which uses only the things for which we have evidence it's more like science right we if we want to believe in something then we need evidence for that so that that branch is called intuitionistic logic it's also a branch of mathematical logic and philosophical logic okay let's come back here now what proof we are going to use here so whenever you write in future yeah i am sure that even very senior people also make these mistakes whenever you write a proof by using contrapositive or contradiction i want you to pay attention the main lessons of this logic and set theory course are these ones and not the theorems that we are studying okay i want you to pay clo close attention to whether you are actually using contradiction or only contrapositive yeah please pay attention okay let's do this well let us prove only one side the second one we can leave as exercise <laughs> yeah which one should we prove ha huh? okay so suppose so i am proving this side yeah contrapositive i am just writing keywords please don't do that suppose as doesn't model t implies u then what will happen then there is a valuation see i am not writing there exist here i am just saying in words that there exists a valuation we are doing logic so in logic you should never use meta level quantifiers you should always write them in english so then there exists a valuation v such that v of s is true what is the meaning of v of capital s being true for all formulas in capital s v of that is true and v of t implies u is true okay then what is the meaning sorry false what is the meaning of v v of t implies u being false yes i e v of t is true and v of u is false because that's the only place true true implies false cannot happen so that's the only place where it happens so now what happened so there is a valuation v which makes capital s true and t true but u false so therefore we have witnessed and i mean i lied when i said well, let's do only one one side this is if and only if done so this this part is really easy okay let's go to the next one same thing here can you do this please yeah there is nothing to uh, nothing hard over here in fact here you can you don't even have to use contrapositive right you just do it directly yeah whenever this is true then that is true so whenever this is true then this is also true i mean that is if and only if so v of capital s union tt prime i mean let me write that Uh, v of s union t t prime is true 
if and only if yeah i mean t and t prime are both true what is the test for that that t conjunction t prime is true so v of s union t conjunction t prime is true and then the rest is easy so this is for any v right so whenever the left hand side uh, is true here then u is true if you assume that then whenever the left hand side of the right hand side is true then u is true and vice versa okay so nothing to do here let's do monotonicity what is sem semantic monotonicity yeah the set of logical consequences of capital s is contained inside the set of logical consequences of s prime whenever s is contained inside s prime yeah that's our argument okay so uh, now how will we show this any ideas contrapositive why take a valuation yeah so assume we are uh, sorry assume a uh, t is a logical consequence of s and v is a valuation such that v of s prime is true yeah what is our claim v of p is true v of little t is true and how do we prove this v of capital s prime is true and s is contained so therefore v of s is true and because s models t therefore v of t is true done yeah since s is subset of s prime and v of capital s prime is true v of capital s is true now further since t is a logical consequence of s we get v of little t is true done so there is nothing to be done here it's very simple <coughs> syntactic monotonicity is also simple tell me what's the idea here assume the proof is n lines and correct assume the proof is n lines the first line will have to be la or nla first line is la or nla or any line which is la or nla yeah you can replace it directly you can replace it directly yeah so start with a proof of t is deducible from s now we use induction on line number or line reasoning well let me say line reasoning so there are three steps in induction there are two base cases and one inductive case so base case 1 what's that la, LA. <coughs> so if t is i mean if ti yeah so suppose yeah i mean suppose ith line i mean let me write it properly suppose ith line is the sequent s proves ti la then then what do you conclude about ti ti is, ti is true 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 ti
TI is a tautology. So, the truth of tautology doesn't really, I mean, it follows from anything. Yeah, so we can directly replace. So, replace it with S prime proves TI LA. Nobody can stop us from doing this. Yeah, because LA follows from anything. What about base case 2? Suppose ith line is the sequent S proves Ti and La. Then what will happen? Then Ti belongs to? Yes. Then Ti belongs to S which is a subset of S prime. So therefore, S prime uh, is the replacement Okay, what is inductive case? Empty. Not empty, MP. Yeah. Huh. yeah, MP, right. <coughs> MP. So, modus ponens on two previous lines. So, the two previous lines have been replaced by, I mean, their LHS has been replaced by S prime. Yeah, so. Uh, well, write it. <laughs> yeah, their LHSs have been replaced by S prime, and therefore, I mean, what should they be? The line Ti. Suppose uh, ith line is the sequent S proves Ti MP on two previous lines. So let me write them J K. So then, uh, without loss of generality, jth line is S proves Tj and kth line is, what should it be, kth line? S proves? not T, I mean don't say TK, yeah, it has to be of a specific form, TJ implies TI, very good. So, uh, by induction hypothesis, yeah, by induction hypothesis, we have uh, replaced the LHS of jth and kth lines <coughs> by s prime and therefore by mp now new reasoning therefore by mp therefore mp jk gives required new sequent Right, so we had replaced jth and kth lines by s prime s prime. So therefore, in the new one also s prime proves ti. S prime proves ti. Yeah, that's the new sequence. And still, the proof is not yet complete. When do you say it's complete? Since the last sequent is S proves T. In the original proof, the last sequence is S proves T. Therefore, in the new proof, we have also replaced it by S prime proves T. Yes, so I will write it here. Since the last sequence is in the original proof, is S proof S proves T, we have replaced it 
by S prime proves T and by induction we are done. So we have obtained a proof of T from S prime, a formal proof of T from S prime. Understood this? Sir. Yes. Sir, we are already saying that uh, the Tj and T, Tj implies Ti are uh, LA or NLA. They are? LA or NLA. No, we are not saying that. They could themselves be obtained from MPs. But by induction hypothesis, that's why I actually write line numbering. Okay, so it is induction on line numbering. So every line up till this point has been done. When you apply the first MP, what should be the minimum line number for MP? 3. Three. Yes. So that means first two were either LA or NLAs. So by induction on line number, we can go there. Yeah, so by induction, we have already converted the previous applications of MP to a larger left hand side. Okay, any questions about this? Anybody willing to take up this challenge? Yes, one and you have it, show it to me. Yes, write it. Good. You just have to be creative. Yeah. I have been told by uh, psychologists, yeah, some friends, that here the human mind is literally binary there are very few people who can immediately see formal proofs and there are others who even after lot of practice cannot see them <laughs> so in exams i never ask unseen formal proofs yeah because it's very hard like you can spend hours trying to do them and not see when I looked at his solution, I only looked at the line number because he obtained the proof on, uh, completed the proof in five lines, it has to be correct. I knew that the, I know a solution which is five lines. You have to be very creative over here with too many S's. Make sure you parenthesize them appropriately. Uh -huh. Now just apply two MPs. I do not know any shorter proof. In fact, I uh, taught this course at the logic school, like propositional logic and predicate logic. Uh, ISLA 2020, I taught this, it's called Indian School on Logic and Applications and during that period there were a couple of enthusiastic students who actually coded up Hilbert style propositional cal uh, calculus and yeah, I mean uh, this is a decidable logic. So you can code it up and write down all the statements whose proofs can be given in a fixed number of lines in a given set of variables. Thank you. Yeah, here the idea is that there is no idea. Yeah, you just have to try. <laughs> Trial and error is the only method here. It either works or it doesn't. I will give you some time to think about it, yeah, two applications of LA1 and two applications of LA, uh, one application of LA2 and then you are through. Okay, uh, 
our time is up but there is one more question remaining and let us do that quickly after that i will show you this screen again okay what is the dnf corresponding to p dash junction q what is the cnf corresponding to p dash junction q nothing changes for b for b it is negation p or negation q or r yeah this is both cnf and dnf you don't have to do go any far okay then what about this p conjunction q if and only if r P conjunction loudly are now. P conjunction Okay, what is this? CNF. What is DNF? Just, just a moment. Somebody here. P conjunction Q conjunction R. P conjunction Q conjunction R. P conjunction negation Q. P conjunction negation Q. Conjunction negation R. Conjunction negation R. Okay. How did you obtain this last one? atoms the calculating the atoms below it so this that is the simplest method and how did you obtain the top one just by yeah the simplification yeah so de morgan's laws are here uh, are there to help then distributivity is also there to help yeah there could be complicated expressions but you can always go through them properly and do this